Okay, we're back. This is day three of the Dell Storage Forum, and I'm Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman, who was my co-host this week. We were, we were with the wikibonbot.org. This is theCUBE, and we've been covering Dell Storage Forum for the last three days. Uh, John MacArthur is with us. Uh, John covered Dell Storage Forum last year with uh, Callie Lewis and myself, and uh, is obviously very familiar with the company. Uh, John runs uh, Walden Technology Partners, and is a Wikibon contributor, runs our Peer Insight. Uh, this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's production, uh, where we go to all the events, we drop in, uh, we bring our cameras, we bring our lights, we bring the best guests to you, we try to extract the signal from the noise. We really appreciate all the tweets we've been getting, all the questions, uh, you keep us honest, we really like that, and uh, we've been going really all spring here, Stu and John. Um, it's really been a, an amazing tour. The, uh, it's great to see the, the growth of this type of media, and uh, we've had some fantastic guests this week. We had you know, uh, Dell senior executives, we've had a, a number of customers, we've had a lot of analysts and bloggers come on. Um, v experts, um, you know, opinion makers. Had an author uh, on today. Oh, right, right. And uh, so it's really been a, a good, well-rounded event. Uh, um, I want to start, Stu, with you and just get your takeaways from, uh, from the Dell Storage Forum this year. Yeah, so it's my first Dell Storage Forum, Dave, and it's an impressive show. You know, I, I was kind of coming and expecting it to be storage. And you know, we, we love storage, it's at the core of what we talk about, but uh, you know, Dell's got a nice solid portfolio. So I love the convergence discussion, virtualization, and networking, and there's plenty of that here, and getting to hear the customers uh, that some of them are becoming IT generalists, some of them definitely are bursting outside of their silos and Dell's portfolio is meeting that need. So converged systems, integrated systems, unified storage, all of those were hot topics of discussion, of course. Flash, cloud, and even a little bit of big data uh, we saw at this show. So, uh, you know, broader offering than I expected. John, what, you, uh, what did you see? What did you learn? What, what impressed you? What do you think needs to improve? Well, one of the things I did uh, while I was here is I talked to a few um, uh, Dell channel partners um, and and as someone was in one of the sessions where they asked some of the Dell Channel partners, how many of you are selling the whole stack? Because remember, a lot of the Dell Channel were, were, were uh, compellent or Ecologic resellers. And so what I did here is there is a movement among those storage resellers, from many of the storage resellers, to sell the whole stack. There's a big incentive for them to do that. Number one, they get, to, uh, they get a, a longer registration on the deals. Number two, they get uh, better discounts if they sell the whole stack. Um, so, uh, so it was interesting to see sort of the transformation of some of the compellent Equalogic um, uh, resellers. So this, those, I think, I think the only thing that I would say is for those uh, uh, Dell resellers who are selling only storage, you may need to reevaluate uh, the strategic decisions for your company and figure out how that how that positions yes. you competitively. John, a really interesting point because if you look at Dell from a portfolio standpoint, going from PCs and servers into right. storage and networking is higher margin. If you're a storage company, adding in the servers and the networking, you could be dilutive to your to your margins there, and therefore you need to reassess uh, kind of your sales and engagement support. Well, one of the things that we've seen from Dell is that they have been very um, um, ag aggressive about partnering with their reseller partners in the delivery of services. So, so as a, a lot of resellers are starting to transform their business from a transaction business to more of a recurring revenue uh, model, and so I think Dell's way of partnering there is actually helping facilitate that, uh, that transition for those companies because they can pick up Dell contracts, they can write contracts that, uh, for services that they may not be able to deliver and have Dell deliver those. So, so it's, it works both ways there. Yeah, so the channel is obviously key. Um, I think a lot, when, when Dell went out and acquired a lot of these companies, there were some real skeptics. Uh, Dell made a commitment to the channel. It has not wavered from that commitment. We heard on Monday was really channel day. Uh, we had several hundred resellers in the room uh, at the keynote. Uh, and there was a lot of channel love going on. You know, day two was really the opportunity for customers to see Darren Thomas and the executives uh, of the main Dell business units, you know, share their commitment to integration. Uh, and uh, actually, it was, I thought Darren Thomas sort of laid it out pretty unambiguously. We acquire, we integrate, and then we innovate. And Dell's version of innovation is innovating at the customer experience, which is really where Dell, I think, shines. Um, they don't struggle with that whole notion of, well, do we do organic? 
or do we do acquisition? They've been very aggressive on the acquisition front. Of course, they had a blank sheet of paper to start with in storage. Right. So that's sort of you know, one piece. The other is we're clearly seeing the transformation of Dell. Last year was the first integrated Dell storage form where it brought together the Compellent C drive and the Equalogic customer shows, and then of course, you know, the core Dell uh, experience. So we're seeing that transformation of Dell from really a box seller to a company that has intellectual property, not just in storage, but across the other vector here, which is compute and storage and networking. So that converged infrastructure was the other very strong piece that we saw. The underpinning of all this is the transformation of Dell, you know, primarily to really bolster the company's value. Uh, Dell is a company that has tried different things, obviously a big PC player and was a high flyer um, in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, and then as we entered the post-PC era, Dell's business model had to change. Michael Dell stepped back in, got very aggressive about you know, the strategy of the company and started acquiring intellectual property. This is a company with a $60 billion revenue line and $20 billion of market value. That's a problem. That's a problem. And, and people, I think, on you know, Wall Street, there's a lot of pressure, and Michael Dell and his team are, are doing something about that. You can't just change that overnight. How do you do that? You acquire companies, you integrate, you increase the amount of intellectual property, you increase your margins, you cut costs. Dell announced it's cutting you know, $2 billion out of its cost structure over the next three years. Um, you pay a dividend, you know, they're doing things to get the stock price up. They've got $14 billion on, a billion dollars on the, of cash on the balance sheet. They've got a su substantial amount of debt as well. Um, nonetheless, Dell in theory could use the cash on its balance sheet to buy back all the outstanding shares, which would definitely prop up the stock price and still service its debt because da Dell's cash flow is still outstanding. Dell's always been really good at focusing on cash flow. So, is the stock undervalued? I, I would say yes, uh, because, of, because to the extent that Dell can make this transformation and succeed, you know, it could be a good buy. Is it going to be you know, the next high-flying um, you know, Google? Probably not, but a very viable company, paying dividends, good sign of, of confidence in its cash flow and its, and its, um, and its business model. Yeah, I have no comments regarding valuations of companies. That would be uh, way outside of my wheelhouse, but <laughs> but I do think it is interesting to see the direction, that, you know, and 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 watch, see what Dell's going to do from the perspective of are they going to uh, become a content owner as Apple did? Are they going to become a user interface owner as many systems companies have tried and and failed? Mm -hmm. If they lose, you know, if they win the desktop war, but there's no desktops left if they win the laptop war, but there's no laptop stuff, what does Dell do? I think that's an interesting question. And so, clearly the infrastructure play is very important for them, but they are going to, Perot Systems was a good acquisition, they'll have to do more in services, right? So they, they're doing good things, but they're going to have to do more. Um, and I think also they're going to have to work on their channel model, not at the SMB, and not necessarily in the government space, or the, uh, commer uh, but it's in the larger commercial space, you know, where some of their resellers do sell very aggressively, you know, and, and sort of figuring out their channel model there, um, where, do they, where do they partner, being, giving clear direction to the channel, where they can go, where they can't go. I so data center obviously is a key thrust data for Dell, huge. obviously with, with, with you know, gear, hardware, uh, infrastructure, software, and services, as you're pointing out, a absolutely you have to do it. I'd like to see more out of big data. We didn't hear a lot at yeah. this conference about big data, but we know that Dell has big data and Hadoop-oriented initiatives going on. Uh, not surprising that a company of Dell's size uh, with a VC arm that is pretty savvy and a big presence in, right. in and California a, and, it, it, and, and, and a lot actually, I'm sorry, if, John, if I can, just two points on that. One, you know, we, we do know that Dell has the partnership with Cloudera, and right. secondly, we, they are looking at it. They've got a cross-functional group. Dell's got the services piece. They've got all the infrastructure pieces. Scale-out architectures fit well, and in the markets where Dell really plays, you know, the mid-market and, and, and below, it's probably a little bit longer before big data gets there, so I don't think they're necessarily behind. Well, that, right, that's why it's hard for Veen talking about big insights, not big data, because the, a lot of the customers don't that they serve don't have big data, but but they're also competing, you know, somewhat against the Intel white box server market, yeah. right? Going into some of the 
Uh, and so I, I think what they do in the highly optimized, highly efficient server space is, is really yeah, important. And, and didn't hear it too much here, but Dell has their kind of custom services group that help build out those you know, massive scale environments where you're, right, you're choosing between a white box completely commoditized solution or Dell has their value add. And, and we had a couple of good guests on that helped differentiate for us you know, how they think they still add value there. But still to your point, John, you know, right, where is Dell outside of the infrastructure? You know, this is very much, the storage show it went beyond that, but you know, you know, what is Dell's you know stake in the so, next couple of years? So as Tim O'Reilly says, data is the new oil, and mm -hmm. um, data essentially is going to be the source of competitive advantage going forward for companies. And those data practitioners, big data, uh, big insight practitioners, are going to make more money, create more value uh, than the people in the factory. And so yeah. Dell has to be a supplier to those companies and really help them transform their businesses and really understand how to get value out of big data or value out of information and insights. Now how does Dell do that? One of the ways is working with the developer community. Dell has been much more aggressive about doing that. It's doing a lot of stuff in DevOps. Uh, with new development tools, it's a lot easier for a traditional hardware company to really begin to participate in some of these initiatives, open source initiatives, Dell's big in OpenStack. Uh, Stu, we were talking about OpenFlow uh, early this week. Dell has always had sort of a, an inclusive mindset um, and you know, was a big part of the original open systems movement, if I can use that term from you know, back in the 1980s and 1990s. So um, we're seeing a yeah. new version of that now in 2012. You know, one of the things I would love to see, I think Dell has probably as, as many, maybe more customer touch points as anybody which creates an enormous amount of data. I would love to hear more about how Dell is leveraging that data to improve the customer experience. So, you know, uh, I think, it would, again, I would think it was Praveen who was talking about, you know, the, the hotel, uh, the CIO of the hotel chain who says, I'm razor focused on, on increasing my occupancy rate. So, I, what I'm interested in is data and analytics that will help me increase my occupancy rate. So what are the data analytics that Dell's most interested in, and how can they take that knowledge and then leverage that out to the CIO yeah, that, community? Yeah, that's a great point, serving. John. It, you know, point. What, one of the, in social media, Dell is actually one of the best you know, case studies out there. They've got their listening yep. center down in Texas. Yep. They obviously are listening to their customers, interacting with them, but yeah, in a broader sense, outside of the social space, well, it'd be forget. great to hear that. Dell has a history of, of the, Dell was one of the original e-commerce companies. Dell was first in the transition to using the web to drive sales. So, right, so and, cu and custom configurations to order, built to order. So know, to that, to your, to your point and to my point about big data practitioners creating more value than purveyors right. of big data, Dell as a big data practitioner, having all types of knowledge right. and information about customers, about buying patterns. Now, can Dell figure out how to get value out of that, how to monetize that, you know, deal with privacy concerns? Uh, I think yes. Uh, I think that's a real opportunity. It's early days there. Um, the other thing that I, I wanted to point out is the whole Apisure vision, data protection. So right. you've got a situation where EMC dominates the data protection market with purpose-built backup appliances, has an astounding 66% of that marketplace. Uh, it's C C uh, CTO of that group, the BRS group, Stephen Manley, at the last EMC World, put forth a vision of snapshots uh, as a data protection mechanism. Very powerfully, in my opinion, we heard Dell talk about not that as a vision, but as a set of products and solutions. Now, it's still early. Many of the customers that we talk to, most, in fact, are not using Apisure yet, but they're looking at that. And to the extent, what I heard was to the extent that it's integrated into our storage platforms, we are probably going to go in that direction. So. That's a good dynamic. The conditions are very good for Dell to really disrupt that whole backup market space. Right, I, th I think it's a good, that's a good point. Uh, and we, we did have uh, Jeff Eccles on from, uh, from Commvault talking about um, the Aperture acquisition and any impact that that might have had on, on, on Commvault. So it will be interesting from a Dell partner standpoint going forward. You know, we saw a little bit of this with VMware, which was partnering a great deal with a lot of the app vendors, but started then sort of absorbing some of the, those tools, those technologies into their own stack, with Dell making more investments, as I think they should. You know, I think you know, the partners also have to watch their partnering strategy 
uh, yeah, and, and, and speaking about the you know investments, one of the surprising things and uh, what I was impressed with is uh, talked about Dell Ventures and Dell's really growing their presence well, in Silicon Valley. Right. They even took a jab this morning talking about you know we're next year Dell Storage Forums in San Jose, right next door to all the competition. So <laughs> you know kind of punching up in this space and uh, good to see them. Well, so yeah, so we're in we're in you know, Hopkinson's backyard or front yard actually yeah. <laughs> this year. Yeah. Going to San Jose, I like I like that about Dell moving the Dell Storage Forum around, around yep. um, appealing to different audiences, getting some you know d both you know e uh, existing customers to come to these shows you know year after year after year, and then appealing to new audiences. And they, by getting and they local. don't just run it, and they're not just running it here in the U.S. There was a Dell Storage Forum in, in London back in I think January, in right? Paris. And, and it's going to be in Paris, so. I believe, in November. Okay. So I think I think that's good. More of a global presence. Uh, global visibility for Dell. I don't know, wh when's the Dell Storage Forum going to be in Asia? Is there one? Uh, so we'll, 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 keep, we'll keep watching for that. But look, this is, um, th this uh, last year was the first year, and the big follow through this year, um, and, and I think a big step up. Too. The, the other thing that we've been talking about a lot in Wikibon, and really this has been driven by a lot of David Floyer's research on Flash, is the whole changing of I.O. architectures. Essentially, um, the premise is that all active data is going to be on Flash um, in the next three to five years. So, if that premise comes true, that portends at a complete redesign of I.O. architectures, uh, where tier zero essentially becomes the new tier one, or all flash arrays essentially replace you know, what we have known as the tier one, and there's a new tier zero, really, which is the memory class flash. And so, um, Dell is not sitting idle. The acquisition of RNA, we learned a lot about the RNA acquisition. It was a, it was a year ago that they made that acquisition. A lot of people said, hmm, what is that, memory virtualization? We're now starting to see, and Dell laid out you know, bits and pieces of its vision to really change that I.O. architecture. Dell intends to be a player there. Um, the storage business has really changed. The big whales don't sit around and, and, and wait to get their clocks cleaned anymore. They, they have the cash on the balance sheet. Right. Yes, they make some mistakes on acquisitions, but generally speaking, they're really smart. They got bright people. They do strong due diligence and they, they make acquisitions and they try to really get ahead of the curve. Sometimes they get caught off guard, um, but you know, and a lot of times they just make that up by plunking down a bunch of money and buying companies like Data Domain, which actually turns out working out uh, in those instances. So the big companies are v relatively stable, and I would say very stable. There are some wild cards. I actually think Dell is a wild card. Dell is dangerous because Dell lives off of PC margins, and so anything north of PC margins is gravy for them, and, yeah, and so right. they can compete at very effective prices. Yeah. Uh, Oracle is another wild card. You never really know what Oracle's going to do. They've got their applications business and their database They're business. They're going to print money with the applications. Yep, and, and they use that as a as a competitive advantage. Um, you know, you know, let's run them down. EMC's got VMware. You know, without VMware, EMC would be a lot less interesting company. Uh, but they've got VMware, and that puts them in the catbird seat in a lot of these cases. NetApp. We're going to be at NetApp next week. Really interesting to hear what's going on there. Personally, I think NetApp's got to do more vertical integration. I think it's got to buy software assets. I think it's got to get more into services. Need more scale out. Yeah, and yeah, scale out, certainly from a technology standpoint, is something they're working on. And uh, IBM, we saw, we've, we, I think we're going to start to see a rejuvenated IBM. Right. Um, HP, obviously, has completely transformed its portfolio. So you've got four or five really strong companies out competing for business, and, and I think it's just actually, great for customers. You didn't mention Cisco in all of this, but you know, Cisco is really coming on on the service side as well, um, and, and you know, they've partnered with a lot of companies. Obviously, they're part of VCE, but they're also part of what NetApps are they part of NetApps Alliance? The FlexPod, yeah, the FlexPod is right? a partner so system. Yeah. At the same time, their server growth rate's pretty high from what I understand. Oh, absolutely. Well, but, yeah. but, but I mean, to put that in context, of course, Cisco's 2% of the overall server okay. business. They are only you know, playing in a small piece of the market, you know, nowhere near the breadth of the portfolio or, or reach that you know, uh, in, in HP, IBM, or Dell have. But they're a disruptive market. force, and, and, uh, and, yeah. and, and VCE and Cisco was part of that, started the whole converged infrastructure trend. Right. Interestingly, right, because you would have thought that would have come from a system vendor, but maybe not, so that, that was disruptive, and then now every major system vendor has hopped on that bandwagon. Uh, Dell, most recently, from what I'm hearing, with some of the most impressive packaging, um, maybe the most impressive packaging, 
I think IBM on the other end of the spectrum probably has the most impressive intelligence built in to the system. Um, so now it's a game of leapfrog. And again, this is just great for customers to see large companies that are well-funded, that are spending money on R&D. I think it's great for the, the computer business, the, you know, the IT business. I think it's, frankly, I think it's great for the United States because these are all US-based companies for the most part. Um, I think it's, it, the, basically the business has become an oligopoly where you have five or six or seven really large, stable companies controlling the chessboard. And I think that is good for customers in the sense that it's um, less disruptive for them. There's less uncertainty for them. They can trust a lot of these big players. They have some really solid choices. And then underneath all that, you've got these startups that are doing all the really cool innovation. Unfortunately, I don't think any of these startups in the near term anyway are going to become you know, giants. But they play a really, really important role in terms of filling white space. And there's a great opportunity. It's a wonderful climate for uh, for startups right now. Well, as you know, I'm betting differently, so I, I think there is an opportunity for some startups to uh, to get to some pretty good size, but. Yeah. Well, I, I, do, you I, think, do you think that yeah. you'll, we'll see another NetApp, for instance, in the storage business, a, a company that started from scratch and can get to $5 billion? No. No, yeah, I, I don't billion, think so five either. Billion, five billion in, in a pure storage company. Right, I, I, I don't see it happen. Three par, data domain, yeah. Isilon, you know, Fusion IO no, even. No, they get, they'll know, get taken out before. Yeah, they'll get mm, taken out. Yeah, but right. I, think there is the, uh, I think there is opportunity for companies in the data protection space, in the in the con, you know converged storage space, to get to IPOable state. Oh yeah, no doubt. Right. And, and the, the the climate for startups yeah. has maybe never been better. Um, right. And so I, I I agree with that uh, fundamental. I think the disruption is going to come from the web guys. You know that's really you know it's the Dropbox, the Google, um, Apple, Apple. You know that's sort of the real the, the consumer side. That's the big unknown here. Um, and then, so potentially somebody could emerge out of that space yeah. as a, a really disruptive force. Whether or not they can trickle that into the enterprise, we'll see. It, again, the enterprise whales will yeah. make acquisitions. If, if it looks as though they're too much of a threat, oh, they'll gobble them up because they've got the cash. Yeah, so, so you know, my, my final take on, on this show, show this week, Dave, is you know, Dell still feels like a startup in the storage world, and that's a good thing. And when you talk to everybody there, you can feel the passion, their excitement. They say they're all running at 100 miles an hour, and they're trying to figure out how to get to 150. So it, it's tough to maintain that as you, as you scale, but you know, good collaborative culture, uh, you hear kind of the innovation and workings together between the teams, learning from the new acquisitions, uh, and, and that's an exciting model, and you know, it, you know, kudos to Dell and their management team uh, for where they've gone so far. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, Laz talked a little bit about that in the last hour, um, and you know, th I c contrast that with, with what I saw a few years back after when HP was doing all of their acquisitions, and you know, the si this, I think the silos pretty much ex existed pretty tightly there and the flying around, the, the engineering teams remained relatively discreet. It was sort of who, which, which engineering team was going to get to hold on to their job, which products were going to get discontinued, I think was one of the concerns that they had. And so I think, I think Dell has done a pretty good job of reassuring the teams, Ecologic, Compellent, Exonet, whatever, to, that, that they're all valuable and that they've all got a role going forward, so. Yeah, well, so I, again, I love the fact that you've got a lot of choice as a customer. V virtually every one of these large companies can point to some product or segment where they're, where they're number one, where they really shine. So that means they've each got a foothold, you know, from which to build uh, their individual businesses. Uh, it's a great time for, for customers because, you know, prices, are going to come down and customers need to do more with less. Um, the other piece, I guess, the other wild card is cloud service providers. Um, we've yeah, heard fr from right. some of those guys, and so, so that's something that we're watching here at uh, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. So that's a wrap. Um, any, any last thoughts? Yeah, just uh, in addition to all the videos, of course, we've got our team writing a lot of articles, so if you go to the wikibon.org site, uh, we've got a curation page that we put together, uh, so just wikibon.org, if you search Dell Storage Forum, you can find that. Of course, as Dave, you've mentioned, youtube.com slash siliconangle has all of our playlists. Um, we're getting towards the end of phase one of the summer tour, and uh, a lot of exciting shows uh, later on this year, uh, VMworld, Oracle Open World, are kind of some of our big shows that we, uh, we always hit, and uh, you know, ex exciting for a lot of what's going on in the tech world. And I'll just make one quick uh, plug for the Peer Insights. You know, if you're, a, if you're an end customer and you've got an interesting story to tell, give me a ring. Uh, Jay MacArthur at WaldenTech.com. I'd love to hear your story, we'll get you on. 
uh, raise your brand and uh, the awareness of your company, the cool things that you're doing. Love to have you on. We typically get 50 to a couple of hundred uh, end users on each call and, and some great content. So give back to the community. Yeah, help out your peers, that's right. great. John, thanks for, for joining us today. It's always a pleasure. Pleasure. Appreciate you, thank uh, you. participating. And, and thank you to Dell. We couldn't be here without the uh, generous support and, and underwriting support of Dell. So thank you very much for having us here. Um, this is Dave Vellante for Stu Miniman and John MacArthur. We're signing off. This has uh, been a great three-day event. Uh, keep watching on siliconangle.tv uh, for the Hadoop Summit. Uh, John Furrier, uh, my colleague, and Jeff Kelly are out there uh, with a team at the Hadoop Summit. A lot of really interesting, hot stuff happening in the world of big data. So uh, keep watching, and thanks everybody. We really appreciate the support, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>